Ladies and gentlemen, digital investors, welcome back to another video where we go over everything that is happening inside of the cryptocurrency markets. If you're an investor of digital assets, you're definitely going to tune in. We're going to be going over Visa and what they're doing with crypto. As we know, the CEO of Visa has came out is extremely bullish on cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology. And uh, the steps that Visa are taking is now really cementing the attitude of their CEO. We can see that, uh, you know, they weren't just talking the talk but it looks like visa is ready to walk the walk we'll also cover some xrp and ripple stuff some cardano stuff also want to show you guys what's trending in terms of what are people searching for inside of the crypto space so we got some good stuff today and going to try to move through this as quickly as possible if you guys could do me a favor if you're a frequent viewer of the show and you'd like to show some support tap the like button it helps a ton with the youtube algorithm to pick this video up and show it to more people um haven't had a video upload in a few days i've just been really dialing in my exit strategies, my trading and investing plans, guys, I've, I've kind of taken a couple days back. And I just really wanted to assess everything it was that I was doing, making sure that everything was still in line, uh, making sure I was still following the smartest, most logical plans. Uh, so I've just been taking a lot of time to work on that. I've been thinking of making a couple of videos, maybe going over a couple of different uh, strategies for exit plans, a couple different strategies, uh, like trading strategies, investing strategies, how to get into that, this market. Uh, if you guys want those types of videos, let me know in the comments below i'm more than happy to make them as you guys know i usually just do the news but if you guys are interested in that let me know in the comments and with that said i don't want to keep you guys waiting any longer let's go over this so visa signals further crypto ambitions with api pilot for bank customers to buy bitcoin now it says visa is working with anchorage keep in mind anchorage is the first federally chartered digital bank okay so anchorage is a pretty big deal um i'm not sure how many of you guys remember that but about oh maybe it was oh two weeks three weeks ago we presented that news visa is piloting a suite of application programming interfaces apis they will allow banks to offer bitcoin services the API pilot program will let clients easily connect into the infrastructure provided by Visa's partner, Anchorage. Anchorage, a federally chartered digital asset bank to allow their customers to buy and sell digital assets such as Bitcoin as an investment within their existing consumer experiences. Last week, Visa CEO said that stable coins could be used for global commerce, adding that to the, to the extent a specific digital currency becomes a recognized means of exchange, there's no reason why we cannot add it to our network. And then they go over the next phase. I thought this was very interesting. So they say this is shifting to the next phase of Visa strategy, where we're looking at how Visa can also be a bridge between the thousands of financial institutions and help them tap into the growing world of crypto assets and blockchain networks. So we have Visa, uh, the CEO of Visa, openly saying, openly talking about the growing world of crypto assets and blockchain networks. OK, I want you guys to keep in mind the growing world. All right, because this isn't going anywhere. Uh, cryptocurrencies are only going to be become more widely accepted. So they go on to say, we're excited to see what early tests and consumer engagement look like for things like dollar cost averaging to buy Bitcoin or for things like earning Bitcoin back as rewards. I am going to be extremely curious to see what comes back as well. If they actually release some reports on this for what their customer engagement is like, um, I personally think that they are going to have very great success offering Bitcoin rewards instead of cash back rewards. I think as Bitcoin grows, as it becomes more accepted, as it becomes trendy, right, as Bitcoin becomes the cool thing, which is what I think we are definitely seeing as we have celebrities uh, and people with large followings, people that, you know, for the most part, the masses for whatever reasons or another, they look up to these people and they are talking about Bitcoin, right? I, I really feel as though Bitcoin is becoming the cool thing. It's going from this, you know, oh, it's used for illegal transactions. Oh, it's for uh, nerds. It's for losers. It's for, you know, it's illegal to, I, I really do think it's going to start becoming trendy where if you, if you don't own some Bitcoin, people are going to look at you weird, right? I feel like we're entering that stage where it's going to start shifting. We're getting a lot of mainstream attention now. And this is just so crazy because basically what this is, is it's going to allow anybody. I mean, if you're a client of Visa, right, you're going to be able to buy cryptocurrencies, right? It says it will let their clients easily connect into, into the infrastructure provided by Anchorage to allow their customers to buy and sell digital assets such as Bitcoin as an investment. Okay, this 
is huge. Cryptocurrencies are not going anywhere. Blockchain technology is not going anywhere. If it was, we wouldn't see Visa, which is a Goliath, come into the space like this, right? Uh, again, just like the Visa CEO said, I, I am really excited to see the reports on how their customers engage with this because I think Again, as it becomes more popular, especially as price increases, price increase will make it more popular. It will get more eyeballs on it. People love a big prices. It gets them excited. I think you will definitely see a customer engagement with this. Now, let's move on to some XRP Ripple stuff, right? Former SEC officials says there's a good chance agency loses its case against Ripple and XRP. So this is pretty interesting. A Hall, a partner at the law firm, Davis Polk, says in an interview with Thinking Crypto, shout out to Thinking Crypto crypto uh, for scoring this interview he says that he found the sec case pretty astonishing he says the judge just might say if xrp was a problem you've known about xrp since 2012 why now what is going on here so he's saying that's what the judge could possibly say right why did you wait all of these years before coming after Ripple if they did something wrong so long ago. He says, so I think we start out with the XRP case with a factual posture that may not be the best for the SEC. Okay, so possibly SEC coming up to bat and they don't have all the cards in their favor. He says, so I think there's a good chance, I can't give you a percentage, but I think there is a good chance that the SEC loses this one. Hall also notes that the Ripple case could threaten the SEC's ability to regulate the rest of the crypto space in the future. His words are, frankly, if they lose it at the district court and they don't settle it, they'll surely appeal it to the Second Circuit. That could end up with a ruling that makes it very difficult for them to exercise any authority at all over the entire crypto space, and I don't think that would be a great thing. As I said earlier, there are some interests that the U.S. federal securities laws are designed to protect that would make sense here. You just have to be very thoughtful about what kinds of requirements you put on this industry. And again, this video is from Thinking Crypto. If you guys want to go and check it out, shout out to him. And I'd be very curious to know what you guys think. Do you guys think that this could just get thrown out, that the SEC is coming at this so wrong that they, they would honestly just lose? Possibly throw it out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I also want to show you guys this. Ripple transactions consume less energy than Visa and Master, MasterCard. And this is from a Doja Bank report. So, I mean, take that from you, Will. It's from Doja Bank, but... A Deutsche Bank report entitled The Future of Payments Series 2 addresses the adoption of cryptocurrencies in the global landscape. They say the main challenges, according to the report, are scalability and energy consumption. As the chart below shows, Libra ranks second with 80,000 transactions per second behind China's CBDC with 300 transactions per second. And so this here is giving you the graphs. You have the medium. So what is being used? Cash, China, CBDC, Libra, Visa, MasterCard, Ripple, and the transactions per second. And that's going to be the transactions per second. It's also comparing you have PayPal here and you have some other cryptocurrencies. So in this showing Ripple at 1700. And as we know, guys, uh, Ripple can scale out to more. I believe we have David Schwartz and a couple other people confirming that, that they can upgrade it to handle more. Now, data cited by Doja Bank indicates that unlike Bitcoin's network, Facebook's Libra, and the networks of the largest payment processors in the world, each Ripple transaction spends 0. 0.00000 one one three three kilowatts making it the least energy consuming okay so a very low number and if you just pair up this number right as we can see uh it is it is very very low uh your next one in line is visa at 0 0.006 and xrp has a couple of zeros before that so we know that ripple can scale up to handle more transactions per second and they consume the least amount of energy which is very important when we live in a world that is uh, pushing for more green right pushing for more energy efficiency here's the xrp rich list for those of you guys who want to take a look uh this is basically what it looks like as of right now it seems like since the sell-off everybody kind of uh everybody's wallets dropped and as of right now xrp is up a, a little bit on the day i think we got from 40 to 44 cents so we're up a bit and wallets are flatlining we'll see what happens uh, with ethereum at all-time highs and everything pumping uh, i think xrp is a good shot of uh of also experiencing some upside action but as we know xrp likes to do its own thing you you can also see XRP on Google Trends uh, getting to some very, very high levels. This here was back in 2017 when it topped out 2018. Um, this is the past five years. So as we can see, we are now higher than we've ever been since those few years back. 
And now we also have this Federal Reserve says nature of money and payments changing in increasingly digital environments. All right, we know Fed, the Federal Reserve has been onto blockchain for a while, and their moves are also cementing that in. The Fed says that it is looking for a manager for its digital innovations policy program at its RBOPS division. The successful candidate will oversee aspects of the program that concentrate on issues regarding the future of payments. They say this includes the changing nature of money and payments platforms in an increasingly digital environment. The potential benefits and risks associated with digital assets just such as stablecoins and CBDCs, the impact of digital innovations on the Fed's operation and oversight of financial services, and the supervisory and regulatory framework for emerging payments platforms, activities, and institutions. Yeah, that was kind of a mouthful right there. The job posting adds that the chosen candidate will be required to work with a range range of domestic and international partners on digital innovation topics okay guys so we're seeing the the visa stuff right the visa obviously they see that cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology is going to grow and the, the fed is also in agreement with that we know we are moving into a did we well we basically already all are, are a digital world we we're just cementing that in at this point and we also know we're looking to go green and Ripple's XRP is the greenest digital currency out there. Uh, th things are definitely looking very good, not only for crypto the cryptocurrency space, but also XRP, especially if we can get this lawsuit settled quick or thrown out. Um, that would be amazing. Let's look at some more Google Trends. So now we have Buy Crypto. All of these charts that I'm going to show you for the Google Trends are over the past five years. So as we can see, over the course of the past five years, buy crypto is at the highest it has ever been before. Okay, this is a good indication that there are more market particip participants entering into the crypto market, which means more money is coming in, especially retail. And we also know not only is retail money coming in, but institutional money is coming in. We are literally seeing a wave of money enter this space on a scale we've never seen before. Now, if you type in crypto, Crypto on Google Trends that is also higher than it's ever been, uh, not as high as buy crypto, but nonetheless, crypto is up as well. And those kind of go hand in hand. So kind of a double confirmation there. Bitcoin, on the other hand, seems like Bitcoin already topped out. It's not as high as it got in 2017, uh, but it did get up uh, here in January 3rd to January 9th, hit up to 52, and it is down now to about 26. Dogecoin absolutely through the roof. I think Dogecoin has gotten more attention now than it ever has uh, ever, right? And I think the price of that is, is very reflective, right? There's a, there's a lot more money in Doge. Market cap has risen quite a bit. Also, if we go off the topic of cryptocurrencies here just for a second, I hope I don't lose you guys, but I like to look at this stuff up. And when I was playing around with this, I saw silver, silver up higher uh, over the past five years. So we could see maybe um, go all the way back to 2004. And yes, silver is higher than it has ever been since 2004. That is pretty crazy. It mainly just stayed, as you guys can see, in this range of between like 32 to 47. Uh, wow, silver is through the roof. And then on the contrary, gold... Gold, which you think, oh, maybe gold's going to be running with silver. No, nothing for gold. So maybe there's a lot of talk about silver because of that silver short squeeze talk and that GameStop stuff. I think that's drawing a lot of attention to silver. As we know, people are buying a lot of physical silver right now, even online. You go to any, any online site and uh, they'll, they'll tell you that they're experiencing some stuff with silver. So interesting, interesting stuff for sure coming out of the google trends i think it gives us a good benchmark of what's going on what is the buzz what are people talking about and we also have cardano and if you guys are enjoying the video tap the like button it really does help a ton uh and thank you for everybody who does like comment engage especially any of you guys who share these videos thank you it, it really does mean a lot now we have cardano iohk announces rollout of native token features in testnet IOHK, for those of you who don't know, IOHK is like the parent company of Cardano. They announced a few hours ago that it will activate a hard fork on the Cardano testnet on February 3rd. The fork will introduce the multi-asset standard called Native Token on Cardano and will be rolled out with the gradual introduction of the Gogan era on the testnet. Users will be able to test the Native Token capabilities that will be deployed on the mainnet with the second hard fork combinator event for Gogan called Mary. 
Mary will allow users to create, issue, and manage their own tokens on the Cardano blockchain and will implement the metadata features introduced with the Allegra fork, which took place in 2020. This was confirmed off a tweet from at Input Output HK, the Twitter for Input Output, or IOHK. They say we'll hard fork the Cardano testnet and apply the Gogan native token upgrade, aka Mary, transforming it into a multi asset network. Next comes mainnet, targeted for the end of February onward. They say the last three of the events will take place somewhere in the second quarter of 2021. The date will largely depend on the results of the stress test of Cardano's smart contract platform Plutus, and the test will be conducted in March, according to Cardano's inventor, Charles Hoskinson. So we have a lot coming up for Cardano. Actually, I think this article goes on a little bit more. We get a, a chart from a trader. So we have a lot going on for Cardano news wise, right? There's going to be a lot of opportunity, I think, especially as the crypto market increasingly gets more volatile. Again, a line, I know a volatility scares a lot of people out. Uh, to me, vol volatility shows opportunity if you know what to look for. Um, and I'd much rather be in a volatile market than a market going sideways. I, I do love love how uh, fun it is the opportunities it presents and everything like that and so with that said so with all the news coming up with how volatile the price is it looks like cardano's ada could be set for another rip and uh, so here's this uh, quick little analysis to say cardano is acting very strong here as the momentum is kicking in beautiful support and resistance flip at 950 sat level with continuation towards the next region which would be uh, 1,325 to 1,400 sats. Not expecting that to break from here, but we'll see. Good bullish moves. Yeah, let me know what you guys think below. Are you bullish on Cardano? Are you longing your longs? Or are you waiting to buy on a pullback of sorts? Or you're, do you have no exposure to Cardano at all? Maybe you don't like the project. Let us know in the comments below. And as you guys may have heard, the Mayweather Logan Paul fight ahead of that, Logan Paul creates Ethereum NFTs. Logan Paul will sell his own NFT-based artwork in addition to a Pokemon card booster collection. Logan Paul will sell a series of NFT-based artworks as part of his Pokemon card booster auction. A total of 36 booster packs and 44 NFTs will be sold with a minimum bet of $10,000. Paul will, will personally open each pack before sending them to bidding winners. So, yeah, guys, we are seeing NFTs become more and more popular as well your prices for today you have bitcoin at 37.5k ethereum at 1600 xrp 44 cents polkadot at 20 dollars cardano sitting at 43 cents Chainlink 24 dollars bcash 426 litecoin 147 binance coin 56 stellar 33 cents doge is just under five cents ave has been killing it up 71 percent on the seven day on the week and ave sitting at 493 dollars was as high as 500 snx also killing it at 20 dollars uh, these DeFi tokens are really taking off guys and we have some coins that still haven't popped tezos has been at these low prices for a while and you know i think these coins that you see that have been at low, at low prices for a while like tezos uh, as the bull market continues, you'll see more and more of these coins that are kind of boring, not really doing nothing. They will get their turn and they will pop off. Again, obviously, that, that's assuming nothing goes wrong, right? Assuming the company doesn't go bankrupt or there's no crazy bad news announcement. Uh, but if if you're talking about coins that have you know a use case, some utility, they have a good market, they have a good team, uh, the, these coins, the flow of money in crypto is going to flow into these different crypto coins so if you see something popping off it's already up you know 1000 2000 percent it doesn't necessarily mean it's a good buy just because a coin is spiked through the roof again doesn't necessarily mean it's a good entry level so just keep that in mind if you're in a coin and it's not really doing anything sometimes patience is really all it takes in this market because that money will flow down through the market and you have vchain sitting at 2.8 cents your fear and greed index for today let's make sure this is correct we're sitting at 80. We are in extreme greed sitting at 80. And with that said, guys, that is the video for today. If you enjoyed it, and I hope you did, make sure you tap the like. It helps a ton with the YouTube algorithm. We also have hit 17,000 subscribers. That is amazing, guys. Um, you know, 17,000 is quite a high number, and we are growing pretty quickly. So thank you guys for all the support. Uh, it does mean a lot. If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell. Let's see if we can get this to 20,000 within the, maybe by the end of the month, we can hit 20,000. So subscribe and hit the bell. You'll also be notified every single day that I put out a video. We go over uh, Bitcoin, altcoins, 
cryptocurrency, everything that's going on in the space to keep you updated. Keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Don't do or buy anything because of what I say. I'm just documenting the daily crypto news and I'm documenting this crypto bull run. And with that said, I will see you all on the next one. Have a great day, everybody.